Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for November 1st. I'm Jonathan Kienzler. Today's scripture reading is found in Jeremiah chapters 51 and 52 and Titus chapter 2. The title of my devotional is Flee from the Midst of Babylon. And we are going to be taking a closer look at this in Jeremiah 51 verse 6, which says, Flee from the midst of Babylon, and each of you save his life. Do not be destroyed in her punishment, for this is the Lord's time of vengeance. He is going to render recompense to her. Now, in terms of the book of Jeremiah, Babylon has been the instrument of God's judgment upon Judah. And we've seen this, that in terms of the exile, that was God's doing in terms of he brought the enemies against his, the enemy of Babylon against Judah um, in order to take them out of the land and as a punishment for their sin and constant apostasy and rebellion against him. He had prophesied long ago, um, long before, that, this, that he would do this if his people would not remain faithful to him. But then, in Jeremiah 46 to 51, the prophecies turn from judgment upon Judah to judgment on the nations. And in, Je- in Jeremiah 50 to 51, God specifically promises judgment upon Babylon. His people, who were previously exiled to Babylon, were told to pray for its welfare. In Jeremiah 29, verse 7, Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will have welfare. In other words, you will have peace even as they have peace. But now he warns his people to flee from her midst and not to be consumed in her punishment. God had told also long ago that just as he was going to bring even a more sinful nation against Israel to punish them for their wickedness, he would also punish this wicked nation um, that was used as his instrument. God is able to do that. He's sovereign over all. All are accountable to him. So he he's able to raise up those he wants. He's able to, this is in part of what it means for him to even be God. Um, he uses those whom he will um, for his purposes. As Second Peter 2 verse 9 points out, God knows how to rescue the godly and also punish the unrighteous. And in this particular case, um, those in Jerusalem who would listen were told to get out and even give themselves over to the besieging Babylonians and God would save them. So God had said that even in terms of uh, in, in Jeremiah 21, verse 8 to 10, during the siege, he was telling them, you know, get out of Jerusalem. It's an evil city. Um, and now in Jeremiah 51, he's telling all those who are on Babylon to get out um, because God is going to bring judgment on Babylon. And he does. He brings vengeance upon Babylon. Babylon is taken over um, by the the um by another by another empire the persian empire even so god always seeks to rescue and deliver his people from his coming wrath god called lot out of sodom so that he would not be consumed by the fire of god's wrath um and he and we see that in genesis chapter 18 abraham pleading even and interceding for um for the people of of Sodom and Gomorrah. But God, does, even though he doesn't find 10 in that city, he doesn't leave those 10 to die. He sends his angels to bring out Lot and his family. The story also foreshadows how God will deal with humankind's final rebellion against God. Revelation echoes the same language to speak of God's punishment on the world and the call to his people to come out. Revelation 18 verse 4 says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her. Um, that is out of it's Babylon, but Babylon the Great, which is um, actually a picture likely of Rome um, and out of the Roman Empire and all that is goes with it. Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. Um, God does not want his people suffering needlessly. He doesn't want them suffering the same punishment as he has for for the nations. But they must listen. They must respond. If um, God's people love this world and won't come out, then they will suffer the same fate. So Peter does the same thing in his Pentecost sermon. In Acts 2 verse 40, he says, Be saved from this perverse generation. Um, And that, of course, is um, as he, he is 
um, continuing to exhort them um, to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins and they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So will you come out of the world and live for God? Will you separate your life from sin and rebellion against God and be dedicated to holiness? God doesn't want you to want to just save you from darkness. He also brings you into his kingdom, the kingdom of light, and puts you into his service for his use. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word from uh, Jeremiah, that you care about your people wherever they are, and you don't want them to suffer the judgment that the world will will suffer, but you call them to come out. And part of what that means is we will not love this world, we will not become attached to this world, because Lord, you are judging this world, but Lord, our affections, our, our love will be found only in you um, and in the things that you love. We need to hate the things that you hate and love the things that you love. And thank you, Lord, that you do this work in us. You cleanse our hearts. You give us a new heart. You put your spirit within us and you cause us to walk in your ways. Help us to submit ourselves to you, to your spirit and the work that you want to do in us. In your name we pray. Amen.